The following episode is brought to you by Poison City Brewing, proud makers of Durban Poison Cannabis Lager, the beer that invites you to live your poison. I really feel like this this could have even like have even started as an interview actually at this point. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we yeah, might yeah. as well just carry on. I have hit record, but that's just for yeah, of course. Five, six, so. Um, can I, yeah, before cool. we do really dive in, though, can we just get a little bit of clear, um, clearance on pronunciation of your name and your um alias? Yes. So uh, my name is Antosia Kwiatkowska, and I come from Poland. It's a Polish name and surname, and uh, my surname means flower which I use to create my music brand, Bloom, uh, which is like a, a you know, name game with uh, connecting the flower and the uh, Bloom and the Danish letter. Because uh, right now I'm based uh, in Denmark. I live here for four and a half years, if I'm not mistaken. Why did you move from sort of you know, Poland to, to Denmark, you know, what sort of motivated that move? I uh, I was 18 when I decided to move um, and uh, I just finished high school uh, in Poland and uh, I didn't quite imagine myself living in Poland and studying there. Um, I couldn't find anything interesting and uh, my dream was to combine something more artistic with some business-like studies and I was just researching different countries, different uh, schools, different programs and I could imagine, I could have imagined myself living in Denmark even though I've never, I've never been there before. I've never visited Denmark before I moved in there Um, but I had a feeling that I would like it. And uh, I found a program of branding and marketing management in a school with uh, fashion and uh, design and business. And uh, I applied. I got in and that's when I decided that I will go for it. And I don't regret. It was so far the best decision of my life. So are you so you're pretty much saying that you you there was a time when you were juggling, say, maybe studies, you know, with making music and whatnot. And how did you sort of cope, you know, just considering how much, you know, I think it would be like a workload, having to focus on what you're studying and having to focus on the actual music and stuff? I've done music always. Since I remember I was singing, I was uh, having bands, music projects on the side. And uh, that was always uh, with me. And I thought to study something a little bit different. But as it turns out, it was a perfect choice because I could combine the studies and building your brand and marketing promotion with the music. What has it been like so far in terms of having live performances with sort of crowds and now you have to transition that experience online because we've seen you do sort of live uh, live performances from your room or on um, platforms. W- what's that been like? What's that shift um, been like for you? It's uh, definitely a big difference and big change. Uh, I-, I love to perform in front of the crowd on a stage. It's, it's a feeling that it's hard to describe. I-, I think you know it as well if you have performed uh, on stage before. Um, so definitely the lack of the audience, the feedback, the energy is, is missing a lot. And uh, I think that's the biggest challenge for all music- musicians right now to, uh, to give concerts online. Um, definitely a big plus is that you can uh, perform to any audience all around the world. Um, that's that was that was a really big plus for me as I could perform in front of uh, my family, Polish uh, family, and my friends in Poland. I haven't been uh, touring yet with uh, As Bloom uh, in Poland or anywhere outside Denmark so far. Um, I could also be exposed to South African audience with uh, Aloe Aloe. 
music uh, management uh, agency. So I think there are pros and cons. I, I definitely miss the the actual physical performance. The energy is just uh, hard to describe. It gives you a really amazing boost and, and looking forward to the moment when the physical concerts will be back. I've seen you bring on Tony Anderson, who um, is your producer. Can you yes. tell us more about your relationship with him and what he brings to the project? Sure. Um, it's a funny story with Tony. Tony is, uh, I think he's 53. And uh, although, like, despite the, the age difference, we are just really good friends and... Uh, we love working together. We love hanging out together. Uh, we've met through a friend of ours uh, that I've been studying with. Um, he had some business meeting with him and uh, and he knew that I'm a singer. He gave me his contact. I just texted him and sent him some of my songs and that's how our collaboration started. So yeah, I live in a small town, yet uh, Tony has a music uh, and recording studio and a similar taste of music. So that's pretty amazing for me um, because yeah, I can just uh, collaborate with him and make my dreams come true. And uh, about our flow and our collaboration, um, Tony is really good at... Uh, making music and all the details, all the structure of music he has a lot of years of experience. And I would say I have more uh, young perspective and uh, good voice. So I think we can combine all of those into the outcome that everyone can hear. On the point that you were saying about, you know, Hello, hello, and your experience sort of now being able to perform, you know, to sort of overseas crowds, you know, we do understand from what you said that this isn't your first South African radio, so to speak. So, you know, how was it sort of performing to a South African audience, you know, even though it was online? It was lovely. I uh, I was really excited. I, I'm still excited to, to visit, to go there experience the country, the people, the, the nature, all the plants and the energy of people. And uh, I had a really good time with uh, the organizers. They, they were very helpful and supportive. And uh, I kind of feel like I'm, I'm building my own way to the places where I would like to go. So step by step, I, I'm, uh, I'm going towards that goal. The one thing that I really enjoyed or, or the way we really started off this interview, you know, with it being, you know, such a beautiful day out, you know, in, in Denmark. And it, it reminds me of something that I saw in your bio, I think on Instagram, where you mentioned that you are a nature lover. So when it comes to you and your love for nature, you know, does that have any sort of direct impact on you being a musician at all? Or is that sort of like a standalone thing on the side? I think it has a lot of connection with myself and therefore it translates into my music as well. Um, definitely nature inspires me and is uh, near to me, was near to me and will be near to me. I think uh, the sounds and although I make electronic music, I still try to uh, get from the nature as much as possible in music creation. Also, in my texts, in my lyrics, I, uh, I have connection to nature and I express it. So I think definitely nature inspires me and, uh, and helps me unwind and uh, relax. And that's definitely uh, influences my mood and my uh, music creation. Yeah, I can definitely attest to that. There's nothing better than to reset your mood with your environment when it's full of lush, beautiful things that we can only get from this planet. So I really kind of, I, even though I don't hear um, really organic sounds in some of your soundscapes, your voice brings this really 
beautiful texture to everything else that is sort of more ethereal in your music. And like, I, I really like the messages that you give in in songs like Limitless Hopes. Like, it's it's beautiful. It's You said that there's always hope for a better today. And like, the way you express that, the way you involve the nature aesthetic, it comes together. Even though maybe you, um, Tony, might be an unlikely pair, I think it really comes together as if it was meant to be. And I can only imagine the music that you guys are going to make together, especially being put under such constraints. Um, I'm really wondering about that sort of feeling of hope when it comes to Limitless Hope. Can you tell us more about that? Yes. Um, the song Limitless Hopes uh, reminds me, and I hope other people as well, that every day gives uh, hope and gives a new start to for us. And um, I often, um, I had the time in my past where I was overwhelmed with with waking up and knowing that there is so much possibilities, there is so much ways to go, there is just uh, unlimited mm, ways to go around this day that I would get overwhelmed and I would forget about the most essential uh, part of it, the most essential thing to just do what you, uh, of course, do what you have to do, but do it with uh, passion, do it with uh, love and with, uh, with uh, yeah, with a hope for, for a better today. And uh, my friend told me uh, after I wrote the song, after, after I uh, published it, that shouldn't it be... Uh, a hope for a better tomorrow and I told him well why why do we have to wait for tomorrow if we can start already today uh, so that's how I uh, make sense out of it yeah I think I think you know it, it couldn't have been explained any better you know it does give that sense of hope I mean even to anyone who might have not have listened to the song I think it's enough you know insight to sort of you know basically go and sort of you know listen to that there I want to really just find out you did mention prior that um you know you made the move from Poland uh to to Denmark at the age of 18 now just walk me through sort of prior to all that walk me um take me to a younger you and sort of growing up you know in Poland you know how was that whole experience for you um I had a good life in Poland, I would say. I have a very loving family, um, which was definitely uh, always, which is definitely supporting me at any stage of my life. Um, with music, I was always uh, very close. Um, my parents used to say that I would uh, sing before I started talking. <laughs> so there's something about it. Um, everything at the at the same melody. I would just create, you know, my own lyrics about anything. I have also quite a musical family, uh, which gave me the option of uh, just uh, moving forward with my uh, passion to music. Um, and so I had multiple projects, bands, which were different, I would say. Um, I think Bloom is uh, the closest to what I feel is inside me from all the musical projects. Yet it gave me definitely a needed experience uh, and uh, also uh, taught me how to perform on stage and uh, even even uh, improving with my uh, with my singing skills. So all of this definitely uh, helped me to be who I am today as a person and as a musician. Would you say that your parents were, were supportive of your move to Denmark? I mean, you were only 18 years old at the time and 18 is actually quite young if you think about it. Yeah, it's actually very young if I think about it. Uh, I think uh, they didn't mind it's because I'm also the third one of their child and they have four. I have three siblings, so there are plenty of us in the family. And uh, I think they didn't feel like uh, there, there would be such a loss if I, if I go abroad. And uh, definitely they knew that if I decide, I want it. So they wouldn't stop me. 
Um, my sisters, they already lived uh, not abroad, but in different cities in, in Poland. Uh, so it wasn't very new to them. It was just a bigger distance uh, than usual than they were used to. That's why they, they didn't mind it that much. I think. I think while we're just on that, you know, before I pass on to Megan, um, you know, transitioning now from, you know, Poland to Denmark, you know, what would you say was, was the most difficult sort of, you know, changes, if at all, that you had to make, you know, moving from Poland to Denmark? It was actually very exciting. Um, I uh, I was so excited about it that I didn't feel much of a fear uh, moving in to a different country. I think uh, I also grew up, I, I really grew up and matured uh, when I moved in uh, to Denmark. And um, it changed me inside and out um, a lot. Um, what would be the most difficult? I think the Danish language actually is uh, quite challenging. <laughs> um, yeah, if I had to choose something. Of course, um, earning your own money, uh, just uh, figuring out everything, especially at the beginning, all the paperwork in Danish. It was just uh, a lot to handle. Uh, but I think... I I started I I when I moved in I already had some uh, people around me so that really helped to uh, settle down and feel feel good feel safe. I want to spend some time on the collaborations that you've been doing because I see in your discography you have five singles, two features and a remix. So there's a lot of collaborating on it, going on and there's also a film collaboration. So could you please tell us about those projects and your collaborations? Um, I think collaboration is the key, especially now uh, to any anyone. I would recommend collaborations. Um, I have a few, as you said, I have a few collaborations. Um, the the biggest one the the one that gave the most fruit so far is a collaboration with a german producer project e aka igor um which i greet and um, his music was um, a bit darker and uh, more melodic more going into uh, deeper tunes of electronic music which i started discovering after moving to Denmark. Uh, so I was really into this music, but I've never been singing to it. I've never been producing this kind of uh, deeper sounds, but I was really e eager to do it. That, that was actually one of my dreams um, in my music career. And um, it's also uh, quite a funny story i just uh, messaged him on soundcloud i saw that he's uh, quite a new musician on the music music scene and uh, i just uh, wrote him a message that i really like his music and i would like to have some mp3s of of his tracks if if he if he doesn't mind and i also told him that if he ever needs a vocal i'm very open to 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 record some and uh, two weeks after we had the first track done, ready to release. So that was uh, quite amazing. And uh, I love that collaboration. Besides that, uh, I have few other friends that we've been working, making some other music, like uh, Klang, uh, Niklai, uh, also Danish uh, guy. Um, and we are making a more nature based more organic sound uh, song so there is there is a lot of going on and I think it's very important for us to actually pick up on on the feature that you mentioned there with Igor, you know, considering the fact that you guys did make nowhere and like last I checked it was on about two point five K views on YouTube. Walk us you know, walk us through the visuals of nowhere, you know, what sort of went behind uh, you know, the, the sort of look that you guys went for. I wanted to combine the very dark and melodic sound of the of the song with some more hopeful and uh, summer bringing uh, aesthetic 
I used a lot of dried flowers and uh, I just imagined combining these two as I as I uh, combine, you know, the music and my vocal, uh, which is more uh, raw and more melodic and um, softer uh, voice that I have. I like to combine the very opposites because that's where I find the most interest and I, I find that the outcome is actually the most interesting and it has something. So I thought to do it uh, also with the music video for Nowhere. And uh, I'm very happy with the with the result. Yeah, it's, it's a very beautiful looking music video. And I really like the link between, you know, all the flowers and sort of your name, like you mentioned in the beginning of the episode. Yeah, one of the things that I've seen is... Um, you saying, don't be afraid of growing slowly, be afraid of standing still. And um, the fact that nowhere is about your relationship with time. Can we dig into that? Can we dive a little deeper? Yes, of course. The message behind uh, nowhere is uh, exactly as you say, um, the progress and uh, not being, again, like overwhelmed with the with the life because I am a person who has very high expectations and I I like to be active, but it can also uh, go too far. And I know that I have to find a balance between looking too far into the future and uh, still appreciating the, the small moments and being in here and now. So what I try to do and what I try to also capture in, in my song is uh, that balance between the two uh, to feel conscious about the moment but also about your life so uh, for me also personal improvement uh, is very important and the quote about not being being scared of uh, stagnation and not uh, moving slowly forward is so important to me what you guys are talking about here is something that is very different. I think of, of you know, of the guests that have come through. It's a very interesting, you know, way of, of viewing things. And I think it's one of the things that makes you stand out, you know, as an artist. And, you know, one of the talks, well, speaking about standing out rather, um, you know, I did mention earlier that I, I did send you a message. I think it was during the week after listening to Warm Water. And I must say it's one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite tracks along with Utopian Life. Those being my favorite tracks, I'm going to be biased and I'm going to ask you what sort of went into those, you know, which producers did you work with behind, you know, the, the Warm Water cover um, as well as Utopian Life? Um, starting from Warm Water cover, I just did it uh, one day. Sometimes I just have this urge to record. I don't, I mean, I care what, but I just want to record um, just sing and uh, that's what I did one day uh, I was uh, home I did it maybe in an hour or so and uh, sometimes it, it really helps me with my mood with my uh, artistic expressions um, about Utopian Life uh, we did the track together with Tony uh, we started it in his studio and I showed him that yeah I would like to do this uh, uh, dancing but more it started from like a minimal I would say sound which turned out maybe a bit different but um, but the progression was that we started together and uh, then he composed a little bit more and just enough so I could uh, record some vocals to it. I did it home and uh, then we figured out the rest and uh, it just worked out really, really well. Um, yeah, it's another song which uh, has a big meaning to me. I hope to other people too, uh, where we need to sometimes stop and not chase for... Yeah, we have to just think what are we chasing for and if it's uh, actually worth all the run, if it's uh, worth uh, all the effort, if we know what we're chasing. Because oftentimes we just uh, want to chase for perfection, which is never there. And what would you, what would you say, you know, just t- taken from what you just said, what is it that, you know, Bloom is, is, is chasing after, you know, as a human being, as a musician? I would say I uh, 
try to be conscious about every moment. If I, if my, if I could imagine my ideal life, that would be a conscious life where I feel in one with uh, with the nature, with my own self, with uh, my mind, and where I feel calm and uh, in one piece with uh, everything what surrounds me, with my friends, with uh, relationship to my work, to my to my uh, family. So I think that's the biggest value, which I think everyone should work on and uh, improve yourself to to be able to to feel it, to be to enjoy like little things. Um, I think uh, Denmark is a really good place for this kind of uh, moments, uh, enjoy enjoying moments. Um, I I learned that definitely. Something that I was, you know, or something that I picked up was your Instagram feed is very well organized and very professional and very clean. You know, is there some planning that goes behind every post that you do? I mean, this is one thing that I'm interested in finding out because, you know, thanks to Megan, she has basically instilled, you know, this thing within me that it's more than just about the music. It's also about the visuals and how you present yourself. So what goes into your Instagram feed and the way that it looks? Is there any planning or are you just winging it? Uh, when I started it, it was a lot of planning. Uh, if you actually go down, you can see that I planned a lot and I done some work in Illustrator and, and Photoshop. Uh, I think it was just a little bit too much planning. And uh, I realized that the color card, especially from from uh, pictures uh, from the stage, from uh, concerts, they they don't quite fit. So that was difficult for me. Uh, to fit in my Instagram. So I just decided that, uh, well, I'm going to post whatever I feel like. Uh, but of course, uh, I still want to keep it uh, coherent. And uh, that's basically a skill that uh, besides, of course, uh, an eye for aesthetic, I, I've learned that skill uh, in uh, at school, at uh, during my uh, education uh, as branding and marketing management student. Um, so yeah, I, uh, it opened my eyes uh, to graphic design and also of course social media and uh, how to use it in the right way. Um, so all of this, I think, uh, made it look the way it does today. I think you and Megan would definitely get along, uh, Megan. Oh, yeah, like we even have a few color, uh, colors in our color scheme that could pair very well, I think. <laughs> could look and sound great if we did something together. Um, I would like to speak about your dream gig. Since you said sort of you're waiting to get back out there and perform in front of a crowd, what is your ideal festival slot? Who are you opening for? Are you the headline act? What's going on? So I definitely want to tour around uh, the US. <laughs> I've been in uh, in the US last summer or last May, June, I think. And uh, I've, I've been to three states only, but uh, I definitely imagine like a big tour around the US um, in my plan. Um, and uh, of course, South Africa as well. That's a place to go, definitely. We've even planned with my best friend Diana to go uh, there this year, but uh, yeah, not, not much has happened with the plan. I think it won't happen this year. <laughs> Hopefully in next year, maybe. And uh, definitely I would start from uh, from uh, playing as a support to some bigger brands, br uh, bands. That would be uh, definitely a way to go. Um, about like a dream geek, um, I really love the energy that Polish audience has. I've been uh, attending many festivals in Poland and there is nothing like Polish audience. They are just so uh, tuned in with the, with the uh, performer that there's nothing better. So definitely I want to experience that from different uh, perspective from being on the stage. Besides that, I love traveling. So definitely just 
the fact that I would be able to travel and give performances here and there is is just uh, it sounds great. Another interesting thing about you is your choice of genre. You know, you did mention earlier on, you know, the word electronic, you know, and even on your um even on your Instagram, you know, you've got that whole electronica and lyricist or, or lyrics and whatnot. So I wanna find out from you, you know, in in a time where you know, a lot of people are choosing or opting to go the direction of, say, hip hop or pop or, you know, say maybe tropical pop or something or house and whatnot. What is it that made you decide on the genre that you are in? You know, or what sort of influenced that? Um, definitely a lot of years of my life, I would say, influenced the taste that I am in right now. Um, my oldest uh, sister, uh, Marisha, she definitely had uh, had an influence on on me starting to explore different music than just uh, pop music, you know. Um, and that's where I started to explore more with uh, sounds I like. I went into uh, electronic music, but it was still very light electronic music, more dancey. And uh, I was just digging in, digging in electronic music, more and more of that. Yeah, from there I went into uh, darker tunes like uh, house and even techno. I, I find that uh, these genres are also very inspiring and very emotional. I would say that uh, often I find uh, darker tunes more emotional than just uh, positive, happy music. Yeah, I can definitely see you on a lineup with the likes of people like Sylvan Esso, even like a Faithless Dido combo, Aurora, maybe even some Maggie Rogers, since you're going into the more organic soundscapes. Um, I noticed that you played um, a few unreleased tracks on your last uh, stream. Are those going to come out anytime soon? What are the plans? Uh, definitely they will come out. Um, the thing with uh, Summer is that um, both me and my uh, producer, Tony, we we have some kind of holidays. Uh, Tony actually has a boat and he's uh, going for two months or maybe less than two months. Uh, he's sailing uh, all around Denmark. So that's what he's, <laughs> he's been up to. Uh, for for last month. Um, so definitely when he's back, uh, we are ready to work and uh, release. We have quite some, quite a good amount of projects uh, that is, that is uh, waiting to be worked on and released. So hopefully we will be busy in the autumn producing and releasing new music so that's uh, that's the story with the uh, unpublished uh, songs uh, i'm also making uh, my own music now i'm starting to or i'm getting back to producing music too um, i've done it some years ago but now i i want to i had a long long break which i couldn't break through but now i feel like uh, i'm ready again to uh produce and uh, express what's sitting in my mind uh, into music you know i was i was gonna ask you the question you know what has you know being a musician or an artist sort of taught you about life but i feel like you you already sort of answer that question through the things that you talk about you know in your music now leading to the question are these messages that you have and the things that you say intentional or do these sort of you know just come about you know spur of the moment you making the music and you unintentionally maybe you know come up with all these concepts or is it sort of like a process where you sit down and you actually say listen i need to have a certain message i need to say this i need to say that um yeah it's it's more more like uh, life gives me ideas for songs like when i um like writing a song for me is uh, very uh, cleansing. It it uh, clears my mind. Like I uh, I usually know what's what's bugging me or uh, what 
problem I have and what kind of challenge I have in life. Like I, I feel it and uh, writing a song about those emotions uh, helped me deal with them. And that's what I do. And um, I have a mm, notebook for ideas, for quotes, for uh, keywords, for inspirations for songs where I write uh, things that I would like to include later on in my uh, uh, process of writing new songs. And uh, so more times I kind of know what to write about. Sometimes it's more uh, impulsive. Sometimes uh, I just sit down and I'm not sure what I'm going to write about, but then it comes and I kind of explore the topic and uh, go deeper about it. Um, what's the process like when you are both the producer and the vocalist? Do things come together simultaneously or do you write one part first? Do you consider different elements as separate parts? What's it like? Uh, we usually uh, split the work into, into steps and uh, we work better on creative parts uh, separately. I like to record from home. Um, where I feel just like nobody, you know, sometimes my flatmate can hear me <laughs> singing some just, you know, random sounds, but uh, I feel much better recording uh, vocals at home. And, uh, and I know that he also feels better when there is no one, you know, uh, sitting around and looking uh looking at his hands and what he's doing. But uh, definitely we uh, we start together. We have some kind of uh, inspirations, uh, some kind of elements that we would like to combine. Sometimes it's like uh, Tony sending me a track. What do you think about it? Sometimes we start together and then we develop step by step um, as with uh, Utopian Life. We started it together in the studio. We made just a bass mm, idea and then I recorded vocals to it and we went further. That's how we've been working so far. And yeah, as now I'm trying to do more music also myself, I know that he can help me out with uh, more details and structuring it. You know, just looking at your journey, you know, you being a musician and you also mentioned your studies as well. You know, would you say music is sort of like your, your lifelong sort of goal? Or do you maybe, you know, considering that you have studied as well on the side, maybe you will eventually, you know, call it quits with the music and then focus more on sort of what you studied for and whatnot? I think I will definitely go uh, with music and follow that dream and uh, passion. And uh, definitely studies helped me uh, and I loved it. I, uh, I loved the, the direction. I loved uh, that it, it actually helped me develop my music brand. But I, don't, I think if I had to take masters, it would be something different again. Something, uh, I don't know. I mean, if I could, you know, combine it, I would maybe even, I don't know, go with something about plants, nature, or I don't know, maybe making nice teas. I, I have many ideas. <laughs> maybe making like a decor for house. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But definitely music will always stay. And, uh, and now that I see that I'm able to make music that I love, um, I will definitely go for it. And what's sort of the general feeling back home in terms of how well you've done? I mean, we did mention that, you know, with uh, with your track with Igor, uh, Nowhere, we did mention that it's on about 2,500 uh, views on YouTube. And, you know, you, that those are good numbers, you know. So with your social media, your following and everything, you know, what is sort of the response back home? Are they Are they super proud of how you've done? I always, like, sometimes I just drop the information, like, yeah, so, uh, you know, today the TV called, or, like, yeah, so my song has this much views. I'm uh, I'm still, like, try to be modest about it and humble about it. I know that they are very proud of me, and uh, they are very happy for every little success that I have. Uh, but I, I kind of keep it, uh, you know, like small always say like mm, so this and that you know i don't make a big deal out of it but i don't know maybe i should be more uh 
open and more like uh, you know celebrating it a bit more but uh, i'm definitely trying to appreciate it with me and uh, go further you have an even bigger listenership on spotify and i'm picturing these people who really love this electronica because it, your music your discography really takes you on quite a spectrum of electronica like there are so many elements of different things like there's there's some trance there's down tempo there's some slow ambient it's like there's some club mix vibe it's really there's even some house this there are so many elements from the different genres that combine to create such a beautiful atmosphere but i want to know what type of person is in this crowd like you speak about poland having really great crowd members who are your listeners what are what type of people are they mm, i actually checked today uh, on spotify you have these um uh, stats you can check um there were a lot of uh, us people and even japan and uh, berlin no surprise here. Um, so, hmm, what else was there? It's always surprising uh, to see these things. Like, I definitely have some uh, good base in Denmark and in Poland uh, because I gave concert also in the, the online co concert in South Africa. It's also, uh, I have some listeners there. There is uh, UK on the list and the uh, Sweden and Romania, Canada as well. So that's pretty interesting to me to see all those uh, data. Speaking of, of, of Berlin and, and, that, and that connection with uh, Project E uh, or Eagle, you know, could we expect maybe another, another sort of song, you know, with, with, with both of you, um, you know, oh, in the yeah, future? Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Uh, he, he's also very, mm, um, he works really fast on music. Um, he is, sends me and Tony like free songs every now and then and just uh, tells me like if you feel like something will fit your voice just uh, go for it and record something so there are a few projects uh, in, on a waiting list um, I just uh, thought like I would like to first do something uh, on my own, some song that I would compose and write before I go do another uh, collaboration with him. But definitely there will be more. Yeah. Um, are remixes something that you want to encourage people to reach out to you for in the future? Um, we actually have around five other friends of ours who are working on uh, remixes. Mm, so there is going to be maybe an EP with remixes um, of Utopian Life with different styles. And uh, I just love the idea of having my friends, musicians, making the remixes for, for, for that song. And actually two of them are uh, almost ready. Uh, one just needs uh, mastering and the other one... I'm not sure if uh, it's mixed already, uh, but the two of them are ready and uh, there is more uh, coming up. So, yeah, EP probably uh, later this year. Hmm, that is that is a huge dream. Wow. OK, EP later on this year. Tell us a bit more about that. <laughs> I mean, if, if there is something solid in the works um, or even if you have like a, a basic structure, maybe of what we can expect from that EP, uh, you can just let us in on that. And so far, we thought about just putting all the remixes together uh, in an EP. Um, that's that's the, the first step and my first EP, let's say, in that form. Mm, and uh, it will be very different from uh, musician to musician. So I think it's it's going to be exciting. Um, the first remix, as you said, is already out, and uh, and uh, they will be all different. So it will be an interesting experiment. Around around when do you think we can expect it to 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 hit uh, our ears? Mm -hmm. It's a good question. Um, the thing is that uh, I don't want to stress anyone with uh, with you know creating the the remix 
Um, so I think it will come out uh, just uh, whenever the remix of, of uh, every musician is ready. Um, so it will be like a gradu- gradually coming out project. You know, for, 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 for me, just one, one final aspect uh, just on my end is lockdown. Um, obviously, it's something that we all basically experience. And, you know, how have you sort of been keeping sane? And what sort of advice would you give to, to, to anyone, you know, who might not be mentally, you know, coping, you know, with, with you know, the, 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 the restrictions and, and everything that's been going on and whatnot? Um, before I say any advice, I definitely have to uh, say that I've been extremely lucky to to be here uh, in Denmark and also um, owning or renting a big house with a garden uh, in a in a pretty small uh, place where I live. That definitely helped me deal and cope with that situation. But I definitely think that, uh, you know, life doesn't stop now that we have this situation. We need to go around it no matter what. We, we have to keep on going. And uh, if if any business is uh, collapsing, just uh, start a new one, something that will work in the current situation. So I think uh, there is always a way to go. It's not easy. It's, it's definitely not a... Mm, comforting situation but uh, this this situation showed me that okay this is where we are and let's find a way to go and uh, that's how you know online concerts start started and uh, we've been we just uh, purchased uh, the gear to be able to stream from our place and that's how we did it and uh, also i knew i have a time there's no concerts so uh, together with my friend uh, Niklas, we made a music video to nowhere. So there is always uh, there are always things to do. There are always always different things to do. So yeah, a lot of gigs were cancelled, but there is plenty of other work to do, uh, which can happen online, which can uh, be, for example, uh, building your fan base or creating uh, more home content or yeah doing a music video i thought uh, of sticking to that plan and just doing as much as i can in the current situation and i i definitely encourage people to do that too i think that's really beautiful and it's really dope that you know your followers as well and your and and people that listen to your music you know they're able to get that perspective and just get to know what you've been up to and what's been happening and various ways that they can cope with the situation um yeah uh megan yeah the one thing i'm really proud of is that the musicians just have not stopped like shout out to everyone who has been creating during this time and using music and listening to it as as a way to sort of bring about some catharsis. Um, what type of music do you listen to? I listen to definitely a lot of electronic music um, in, in different uh, spectrum of that word. Um, I, yeah, I listen to a lot of music, um, like not only electronic, but also... Uh, like even juke and uh, dance and a bit of hip hop and uh, pop indie, so that's a big spectrum. Um, it's it's hard to say, you know. It's hard to answer this question. I think going hand in hand with what with with the, with your musical taste, an important factor that you mentioned was that your parents are also musicians, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. I think you said earlier um, on. My, my family was musical. There was always... Uh, my mom played piano and uh, she can sing as well. Uh, well, my father, he likes to whistle. <laughs> He's whistling to jazz. Uh, with, uh, yeah, my brother and my father like uh, a lot of... They like jazz a lot. Um, uh, but, yeah, my cousins, uh, they were playing some instruments. I was playing piano and guitar. So there's been always a little bit of music in the family. Would you say that made your journey as a musician a lot easier and sort of getting into music, you know, having that background and having a very musical family? I think it definitely helped. Uh, we still have a 
piano at the at the family house around Warsaw. So that kind of uh, gave me per- perspective and my, my parents were, of course, open to the idea of uh, me attending to music school uh, for a little bit of time, which I didn't like, actually. I hated it. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I dropped out after some time. It was just too stressful and uh, they were teaching you uh, boring stuff and they were teaching everyone to sing the same way. And I was just like, I don't want to sing the same way as everyone else, you know, just doesn't make sense to me. So uh, also my uh, piano teacher was uh, stressing me out a lot. I even forgot my mother's name uh, during her classes. So my mom thought, okay, you know, screw it. Let's let's just uh, get you out of there. Like there's uh, less uh, more cons than than pros. So yeah. Um, final question on my side. Um, who would be a dream collaborator for you if you could collaborate with anyone, living or dead? Who would you choose? Mm-hmm. Um. I would like to make music with uh, Christian Luffler, for example, or maybe a song for uh, Rome. I think that could be fun. Um, it would be cool if uh, Romare sampled my voice as well. I love his music. He's using a lot of samples from different uh, musicians that would be awesome um, or maybe if I could uh, make a song with gorillas <laughs> why not yeah that would be interesting exactly that's what they are they are just uh, like anything can work you know any any anything can work with their idea so that would be fun I've been doing this thing where I've been making bets. I made a bet with uh, another artist that we had on Reben, and I want to make a bet with you. I feel like in the next, say, mm, 10 years, within the next 10 years, uh, Bloom is going to have a, a, a song with the gorillas. That is, that is, <laughs> that, that is. sounds good. <laughs> L- let's hope it will, the, the dream will come true. Another podcast in 10 years. A hundred percent. Maybe a few more in between, actually, just to, to keep checking up on how you're doing. But definitely need to revisit the gorillas' uh, feature story. I'll try, <laughs> try my best. Yeah, I think that we at least need a we at least need a part two when Tony comes back from his travels. Mm. With yes. The both of you. <laughs> Yeah. I uh, know. With that being said, guys, you know, Bloom, I'd like to just thank you for coming through to the podcast. Um, it's been such a pleasure learning about you. Super chilled vibes, really amazing music, and I feel like we've learned a lot about you. Not only myself and Megan, but anyone who's listening as well. In closing, give us all your handles. Where can people get in touch with you if maybe they want to do any features or they want to just contact you and tell you how much they love your music? Let us know. Um, yeah, you can follow me on uh, Instagram, especially Facebook as well, and uh, on any streaming platform that you're listening to. You have no idea how much it uh, helps and leaves everyone musicians mood. Uh, just a simple follow for you, but it it creates a lot of meaning for artists. So please do that. And uh, thank you so much for having me. It was very, 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 very pleasant. Yeah, we really enjoyed having you on the show. Um, we have to close out one of your tracks. Um, which one do you reckon best represents you? Mm, that's a good question. I think uh, my favorite is actually Nowhere. Yeah, I think it's perfect that we're gonna be we're gonna be doing nowhere because you know it may even get some traction, or even more traction on YouTube as well. So yeah, we're definitely gonna play out with nowhere. Um, and guys, please tune into this episode. It's gonna be available on SoundCloud, SoundCloud, we are Sledge Underground Podcast on Spotify, Sledge Underground Podcast, and on Apple Podcasts, it's Sledge Underground Podcast on social media. Check us out Facebook, we are Sledge Underground on Instagram at Sledge Underground and Twitter at Sledge O three one. As for myself, it's at Zwane O three one and. Uh, Megan, who are you online? You can find me on Instagram at Lemon Dove Duo or at Mega King. Bloom, thanks so thank you so much for joining us today. It has been serene and surreal. Thank you guys for having me. Have a good day.
Just let me be free.